Louisiana. She's the exception and never the rule. She's a mystery that asks not to be solved, but simply to be experienced. Louisiana, Louisiana where you can come as you are and leave different. Whether you're planning a Louisiana convention, family reunion, or a southern vacation, the Louisiana Association of Convention and Visitors Bureaus connects you to information sources throughout the state. The Louisiana Association of Convention and Visitors Bureaus. The Baton Rouge Area Convention and Visitors Bureau welcomes you and yours to Baton Rouge, Louisiana's state capital. From the old governor's mansion to fabulous dining and Zydeco dancing, Baton Rouge, authentic Louisiana at every turn. Popeye's Chicken and Biscuits, featuring Cajun-style chicken, red beans and rice, and buttermilk biscuits, all flavored by the memories and imaginations of Louisiana chefs. Popeye's Chicken and Biscuits, committed to preserving Louisiana's flavor heritage. Here in Louisiana, we have a saying, we don't eat to live, we live to eat. And y'all, that could have a double meaning. In every Bayou Village and home we visited, we found one thing to be true. Although all of our dishes taste great, they're not all good for us. So my mission today is to take our time-honored recipes and make them a little healthier for us. I'm Chef John Falls. Welcome to Louisiana Cooking with a Change of Heart. Hey, how are y'all doing? <laughs> nice to have y'all. Nice to have you. Hello, hello. How you doing, y'all? Nice to see you. Nice to see you. <laughs> hey! Y'all, it's so great to have you uh, here in my home and in the kitchen uh, uh, cooking with me today. It's uh, fantastic to have you. I want to introduce all of you to a very, very good friend of mine, Melba Mathern. And of course, Melba's from Homa, Louisiana. Let's give she and Van a good hand here. Nice to have y'all. Thank you, John. <laughs> Melba is the reason we're here today, y'all, because she sent me a fantastic fantastic recipe, a great Louisiana recipe that probably dates back in Louisiana for a hundred years. Everybody does a fantastic chicken fricassee, a good chicken stew. And Melba sent me the recipe and my challenge here today, y'all, is to take that great recipe and modify it because diet is a four-letter word in this kitchen. You know, we don't diet here. We modify fats a little bit. We try to make sure that whatever we do to a recipe, a Louisiana, especially a traditional Louisiana recipe, it has to taste as good as the original. Otherwise, we won't eat it, so why do it? So I went to Melba's house. Van let me in. Huh? <laughs> Vivian was cooking on the stove. Huh? And y'all, why don't you join us, and I want to show you what happened when we were there. Today I invite you all to join me as I travel on Bayou Lafourche to the heart of Terrebonne Parish to the town of Homa. Homa was named after one of the most important Native American tribes occupying Louisiana at the time of colonization. Today it's a thriving center for oil, gas, and sugar. Hey, y'all, it looked like I caught you working in the garden. Yes, you did. <laughs> so glad How to see you. How you doing? Fine. Nice to see you. How have you been? Fine. I thought you were looking great. Well, a travel home to visit Melba Mathern, a Cajun girl who's lived most of her life right here in this South Louisiana town. I always enjoy visiting in these Cajun villages because it's so easy to see the strong French influence thriving here for more than 200 years. An example is this baptismal certificate hanging on the wall, totally written in French. Even my birth certificate and all of that at St. James. As in most of these homes, the kitchen is the heart of the house. And on this morning, Melba's sister Vivian was busy in the kitchen finishing off a pot of chicken fricassee while Melba and I sat on the back porch. It's amazing how similar family stories are in these parts. Although she grew up in the bayous of Louisiana and my home was about 100 miles away on the Mississippi River, most of the food and folklore are identical. Melba went on to tell me about her grandmother choosing the chicken for Sunday dinner and fattening up that bird on cracked corn and getting it ready for the stew pot. It's what happened after that may get some folks squeezing. Oh yeah, she'd go out and she'd get that chicken and wring its neck and put it on a tree stump and chop it off. And I just never, I never knew how she could do that because she was such a gentle person. Tradition in her family states that the perfect chicken stew is finished off with sliced green onions. And she remembers as a little girl when mom sent her out to pull the onions from the garden the stew was ready. Well, y'all, the onions went into the pot and sure enough, Vivian appeared at the door with a sample of her mother's specialty, Sunday morning chicken fricassee. 
Well, Melba's husband, Van, wasn't about to let us eat this masterpiece alone, so he grabbed a plate and joined us for what was, in my opinion, one of the best plates of chicken fricassee I had ever tasted. Van, I tell you, you did a great job serving, huh? Well, yes. Thank you, John. You ever need a job? I got a restaurant. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Y'all, again, welcome. It's so nice I have you now. Uh, were you really working in the garden that day, or you were just waiting for me? Which one was it? Huh? I was waiting for you. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me the story again, because, you know, I said we lived 100 miles apart, because I lived on the river in St. James Parish. Uh, you, of course, in the swamp lands of Lafouche. Uh, but yet the traditions were the same. You were telling the story about your mother wringing that chicken's neck, and you never could believe uh, that, you know, how could she do it, you know, because you, it, there was almost a cruelty issue to it. But everybody did that, right? That's right. It was a necessity then. No, everybody raised their right. own chickens, and I was saying they, they, they fed them cracked corn. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I remember my grandmother taking a chicken and putting it in a cage, putting corn in there for about a week or so, and, and either the chicken knew it, we certainly knew it, that Sunday, that was that chicken's day. That's right. That, <laughs> that's right. That chicken was done on Sunday. Well, anyway, you have a great, great fricassee. In fact, I want to show everybody that uh, dish. Oh, look at that, y'all. It is just fantastic, and it's really a beautiful dish with all of that nice chicken in there. And your sauce is, uh, fricassee is a stew, uh, in Louisiana, and this has a, one of the things I really liked about yours is that it had a nice, uh, uh, thin consistency uh, to it. It wasn't really thick and roux, mm -hmm. really nice and flavorful. So I'm going to try to duplicate that flavor in my own fashion, cutting back a few things. Y'all, the magic words in the kitchen today, wake it up, shake it up. You got that? Wake it up, shake it up. And to help me wake it up and shake it up here, Rex, you notice my cameraman here, huh, Rex? He stirs all of my pots with the lens of that camera right there, so he's going to be zooming in. And when I say wake it up, shake it up, whenever we're trying to remove fat and sodium and some of those things from our dishes, we always want to pile on things that taste great and are great for us, extra color, bell peppers and carrots and green onions and herbs of every kind. Herbs are great. Use our herbs in the place of sodium and all of those things. And, of course, rather than making a dish taste less uh, good, let's say, because we're removing some of the things that we normally like, well, forget about it. We're adding and piling on things that wake up the dish, shake up the dish a little bit, and make it really, really good. So let me tell you what I'm doing here. Rex, if you jump on this platter right here, and Melba, you back me up on this because this chicken of course, uh, was cut into pieces, eight pieces, skin on. And for my dish, to start my modification, I removed the fat. Y'all, look at the fat I took off of the skin, of uh, the skin when I removed the skin of this chicken to just get a nice uh, skinless uh, chicken. And of course, then I took my knife and removed most of that excess fat. And of course, you see herbs and bay leaves are everywhere here because this is gonna go up uh, into the pot. Now, what I did, I seasoned the chicken just a little bit with a, a, a salt substitute. I just sprinkle a little salt substitute on it. And even though I like to use salt substitute after the dish is uh, cooked, because I think it retains its flavor, uh, the sodium, uh, the salt flavor at that point, I did add a little bit in the pot with two tablespoons of oil. Now, of course, you started with about a cup of oil and uh, flour to make your roux. And of course, that's where a lot of your, your uh, fat comes from. So I removed most of mine by putting two tablespoons and taking the skin off of the chicken. Now that that's done, I'm going to go ahead and put in my other flavors, onions. And of course, I'm going to pile on here. When I say wake it up, here it is, y'all. Onions, celery, you see that? A couple of different bell peppers. I'm using uh, uh, orange, I'm using red, I'm using yellow. And of course, the bell peppers don't really taste any different when they're colored. But boy, I tell you, anybody grows colored uh, bell peppers in here? Anybody, anybody grows a garden of peppers? If you leave green peppers on the vine long enough, they're going to turn a color. But these right here are, are planted for a certain color. And of course, the reason they're more expensive is because they have to stay on the vine a lot longer. They have to be taken care of, so they add different prices uh, to them, higher prices. But remember, get them in the store when they go on sale, cut them, and they do wonders to improve a dish just with eye appeal. 
really nice. So y'all, now I'm gonna stir this around here, and look how pretty that looks here. Rex, that looks gorgeous, huh? I bet your camera's gonna dance here. Uh, <laughs> dancing camera, y'all. Every time this camera sees this beautiful food. Now, once that's in, I have my garlic and all of that. Now I'm gonna dust in my oilless roux. Now, this is the first of our biggest differences here, and let me tell you what this is. When Melba makes her roux, she puts probably one cup of oil, one cup of flour, and makes a typical roux, browning flour in oil to about 385 degrees, which is the typical thickening agent in Louisiana's fricassees and gumbos. Well, what I did, I browned my flour in the oven. I just took wheat flour, put it in the oven. You could use whole wheat flour. Put it in the oven and just kind of uh, 375 degrees in a skillet, no oil. And of course, the flour will still have the same thickening uh, amount. I mean, there's going to be no less thickening uh, uh, of the flour. It's just that I've reduced all of the oil. So you can imagine by taking the oil out of the roux and then the oil out of the chicken skin, I'm already in pretty good shape. Now, what did I do with the uh, chicken, uh, 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 some of those bones and carcasses? I took, I made a nice lean chicken stock. And when I say lean, I made my stock last night with the bones of the chicken. And then I put it in the refrigerator and any fat that came to the top, I just went ahead and, uh, and skimmed off. And now I have a great chicken flavor in my fricassee here. And uh, let me kick that all the way up here. And uh, of course, now I'm gonna have even more great chicken flavor because of that chicken stock. Now you didn't use a stock, you just used water. I used some stock. Now you can also, what about the can, uh, the, the consomme, the chicken consomme, uh, good low sodium consomme, y'all would be great too, you know. So you see this looking pretty good here. Oh boy, I tell you, this almost looking as good as this here. I'm not, I'm not saying anything yet. <laughs> Huh? I'm still being a little okay. cautious here. Okay. Huh? Huh? <laughs> now, I can come back in at this point. I can add some uh, parsley. I can add a little green onions. In fact, I have green onions in the same bowl. And, and now, you told a great story about green onions. Tell, tell us about that again uh, when, when she said to go out to the garden to get them. Well, when she cooked her chicken stew, I, it smelled real good. And she, when she would ask me to go get the parsley and the green onions, which she had a little patch by the back porch. Right. I knew it was almost cooked. <laughs> it was ready. The green right. onions went in last. Well, That's so right. is so is mine. Now, y'all, to wake it up and shake it up, I'm going to add a little bit basil and thyme because, again, herbs in the garden are going to be fantastic for this. And you see it's starting to come to a nice boil. The sauce is going to be fairly uh, thin here, just like yours. And then I'm going to come in and add, again, the chicken. I put a little salt substitute in. I'm going to put a little bit more here. I'm going to put some pepper in it. How much pepper? Well, as much as you like to taste, I always say. So right there is the pepper that I need. And what I would do, I would lower this to a nice uh, simmer. And I would let this simmer for about 45 minutes to an hour, depending on how old that chicken is. Because that chicken gets old, it gets tough, y'all. But when it does uh, get nice and tender, and I'm going to move this out of the way, when it gets nice and tender, then this is what it looks like over here. And I want you all to take a look at this. Good, good. look at this etouffee here with all of that nice chicken, all de look, look at that, all de skin. Oh, just fantastic. I have to serve. I'm going to serve Melba a little bit. And then, Floyd, you know what you have to do, right? Huh? <laughs> Floyd, uh, Floyd, you might have to eat it, but I'll tell you what, you're going to have to, sh you're gonna have to serve a few folks back there. Oh, I'm going to give her a little chicken because Vance might want a piece here too. So I'm going to put that on the plate right there. And I'm going to give that to you. And y'all share that right over there. Thank you. And Floyd, you get the whole pot. <laughs> huh? Right there. And you get the bowl. And hey, hand those back, y'all. Isn't that a nice looking dish? It is. Right there. Isn't that great? Really nice and uh, full flavor there as well, huh? Very good. Really good. Okay, y'all, now that they're, now that they're being gourmands, as we call it, as they're starting to eat all of that nice stuff. Now I'm going to do a dish that I just absolutely uh, am excited about. And I want you to take a look at this. This right here is the different types of shrimp I have to work with in Louisiana. I have these nice little 7090 peeled and deveined. I have a little bit bigger count here. This is the white shrimp, and you can see this, the gray is here. I have these jumbos. Look at these bad boys here. Aren't these gorgeous? Oh. This is the ingredient for my Rivertown shrimp and eggplant. I have some chopped eggplant here. 
jambalaya. Now, I have to confess, when I talk about jambalaya, y'all, I'm from the river. And what I do, I always do a pork, a chicken, a sausage, and I cook a really nice brown jambalaya. But this recipe that was given to me uh, is a recipe of shrimp and um, eggplant. So what I did, I took the eggplant, and Rex, if you get a shot of this, I poached the eggplant in water, no salt, just poached until it got very tender. I peeled and diced it, and it's going to go into the pot right at the end. So now that I have my sausage, I have some onions, celery, bell pepper here. I'm going to throw in some more. Uh, so I, I see that flaw is getting everything working there. Uh, I have two different color bell peppers, tomatoes. You notice I'm waking up this pot, y'all? Look at that. Look at those gorgeous colors in there. That's just beautiful. And of course, that's going to help color that rice. The sausage I have here, this is a lean turkey sausage. We like smoking our jambalaya, so this is a smoky jambalaya, but it doesn't have all of the fat of the pork sausage that we use. So again, I'm not eliminating the sausage in my jambalaya. Now, I'm going to put in my shrimp, and Rex, I tell you, I'm going to pile it on here. I'm going to pile it on. I'm going to just throw that pretty shrimp down in there. And the, the, the eggplant, even though these right here are not boiled yet, I think you got the idea. They're going to be really, they're going to cook quickly too. I'm going to stir that around, get all of that in the pot nicely. And once all of this starts to cook, you notice there's no water in here because these vegetables are going to make their own stock. The shrimp are going to cook very quickly. And y'all, I'm adding mushrooms to the pot. Mushrooms are like little sponges. You add them in and they suck up all of the flavor that's around them. Green onions and parsley right at the end. Garlic, y'all. Oh, you like garlic? Oh, do you like garlic? I love garlic. Mm. Does any culture use more garlic than Louisiana? I don't think so, I don't think so huh? And uh, this pot just keeps getting better, y'all. Now, I think you know what wake it up, shake it up means, huh? Take a look at that pot right there. No water again, and when I put in the eggplant, which I'll show you right now, you're going to see that I'm adding a certain amount of water because the eggplant, of course, carries a lot of water with it. Now, I'll simmer this again, just a second. Now, I'll add some flavors to it. I'm going to add, again, salt substitute. Remember, shrimp has a tremendous amount of sodium, a tremendous amount of sodium, so natural sodium in the shrimp. I'm going to put some of this nice hot sauce in here. And how much hot sauce, again, to taste? Some more salt substitute. And y'all, when I cook the rice, another difference in this dish from my own jambalaya, when I cook jambalaya, I add the rice to the pot, and I cook it right in here. So that's all I'm going to do right here for a minute. I can finish it with just a touch of this, and I'll let this cook for just a minute more, and then I'll add the rice to it. Let me show you a couple of dishes that I would serve along with this uh, shrimp jambalaya and, of course, that wonderful fricassee. The first dish I'm going to show you right here is this nice, uh, this is a pickled carrot salad. The carrots have been poached, and then I, uh, with a, a little different uh, green, you see the bell pepper right there, red bell pepper, basil. I put a lot of herbs on it, and by reducing the oil here, I'm using a little light uh, tomato soup as the dressing on these pickle salads, and I, and I just put a little vinegar on it. I reduce the fat by 50% in that dish. Look at that pie right there. I've got to sprinkle a little sugar on it, y'all. Look at that pie. This right here is a very famous pie in Louisiana cooking. This is called the funeral pie, believe it or not, because in all the neighborhoods, when somebody died, they would always bring this really interesting raisin pie. It's raisin and cinnamon and brown sugar and all of that kind of nice stuff. And of course, uh, uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful use of our sugar in Louisiana and the fresh fruit uh, that, we, uh, uh, that we can add to it because we can add some nice uh, of our wild fruit like the mayhaws and all of that. So y'all, uh, if we can get a nice look in my pot here, now that you've seen those dishes, take a look at this. All of my jambalaya, everything's coming together nicely. The flavors are good here. Now what I'm going to do, the eggplant is already cooked, you see? And the eggplant is, will pick up the flavor of the pot as well. And what I'm going to do now is to just take a nice big plate of rice. Now this is the way uh, they did it, so I'm going to do it the same way. I'm going to take a ladle here, go into the pot like that. Oh, Floyd, I tell you. Floyd, no, Floyd, I tell you. 
Huh? Uh, <laughs> woo! I tell you, you better, hey, <laughs> Floyd, you better get the gun. Huh? You better get the gun. Oh, y'all, this is really, really a nice, uh, and I'm putting all of that nice uh, sausage and everything else on. Now, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. All you need to do here, as I say, you can sprinkle a little bit more of the salt substitute on top right prior to serving, a little bit, of course, of this nice hot sauce on top. And y'all, this stuff is going to be ready to serve. Let me get a little, I'm going to hand some of this over to you, put a little bit of that sausage there. Now, you can taste that. And then, look, you still have to serve. <laughs> yeah. you, don't get, you don't get out of it here, right there. Uh, and just take that and put it down. You need any more plates? Huh? Can I borrow some of your plates sure. over there? Since Absolutely. you're the guest, you don't have to do all the serving. You get to do more of the eating. Your sister has to do more of the serving today right here. Okay, y'all. Uh, by the way, by reducing the fat in the roux, by using a nice chicken stock that has been defatted and there's no sodium in it, we reduced the fat by 68% in this dish. 68% and the sodium by over 50%. Now that's a, that's a lot when you think that, uh, that in, in all day long in our diet we're only supposed to have what about 2,000 milligrams of sodium and we've already just cut half, half of what we would have used in this one dish. So wonderful way to reduce this and did it taste pretty good that oh, fricassee? Very good. It's very, very good, good huh? Okay y'all let me give you my last little dish that I know you're gonna love here and let's take it just take a look at this because this is really really interesting here. What I, I'm have fresh green beans everybody grows gardens in the bayous of Louisiana and what I have here is a wonderful uh, green beans and I just poached them lightly in fact in a defatted chicken stock again and then I took onions these are Bermuda onions the original recipe called for Vidalia onions, but I like the color of the Bermuda onions better. And I put two tablespoons of sugar on a whole onion and I put it in the refrigerator overnight and it marinated in the sugar and made these onions even more sweet. That's a good salad onion. Now what I'm going to do is make a salad dressing. I'm, I'm using a half a cup of olive oil. The original recipe called for a cup and a half of olive oil. I'm adding some red wine vinegar, just three tablespoons of red wine vinegar. I'm adding just yellow prepared mustard. Boy, I tell you, you know, Floyd's doing a great job. Look at him here. I tell you, hey, Van, forget about it. You don't get the job. Floyd gets the job. <laughs> uh, I'm going to add a little cayenne pepper. Y'all like cayenne? Or a little, put a little extra spice. Uh, you know, and then I'm going to shake it up with some of these herbs again, a little basil a little thyme going in there, and then I'm going to put a lid on it like this. I'm going to make me a nice little shake it up like that. Wake it up, shake it up. Oh, there it is. And look, there's my dressing. It almost emulsified with that yellow mustard in it, and the flavors are just fantastic, fantastic. I'm going to take this and put it in here. Any other great, tell me another great family story about growing up in Homer, Louisiana. I mean, you know, when you think of the bayous, when I was in your house, there was all those ducks and uh, uh, fish on the wall. Now tell me, who's the fisherman and the hunter in that family? Huh? Well, my three boys were. Yeah, they all? And, yeah, they, and they, what was good about where we lived, they could just go right out yeah. half a mile away and do the hunting and the fishing. That's another great thing about growing up in Louisiana. Right in the backyard, you can harvest anything in the world right out of your fields there. Right it out was of a great place to raise boys. Well, sir, uh, South Louisiana is a wonderful place to grow up and live, no doubt about it. Great food, but great people, too. Now, y'all, look, I'm going to also add here some nice lean ham. Rex, where are you going? Huh? <laughs> nice lean ham. This is turkey ham. I'm putting in some julienne peppers here. And then, y'all, I just need to stir this up just a little bit to blend all of this together. And, of course, the salad dressing with the beans and the sweet onion. Oh, you talk about gorgeous, y'all. This is absolutely fantastic. It's wonderful. And I don't think you can get a tastier salad. And, of course, with the olive oil, we really got to a point where we reduced the fat in this dish. Oh, let me see here. I wrote it down about, well, 63%. Can you imagine that? Anyway, y'all, oh, a little cheese got to go on it, too. Huh? How can I forget the low-fat cheese? Anyway, y'all, that's it. I really, really appreciate y'all coming. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed everything. And, y'all, I want to thank all of you for joining us, too, as we continue to cook up more of these great tastes of Louisiana with a change of heart. Who says mama's cooking can't be healthy, huh? That's what I want. Y'all, I'm going to feed you, too. Let's eat. Right.
All right, let's see. Everybody's got something on it? Got something on it? Louisiana. She's the exception and never the rule. She's a mystery that asks not to be solved, but simply to be experienced. Louisiana, Louisiana where you can come as you are and believe different. Whether you're planning a Louisiana convention, family reunion, or a southern vacation, the Louisiana Association of Convention and Visitors Bureaus connects you to information sources throughout the state. The Louisiana Association of Convention and Visitors Bureaus. The Baton Rouge Area Convention and Visitors Bureau welcomes you and yours to Baton Rouge, Louisiana's state capital. From the old governor's mansion to fabulous dining and Zydeco dancing, Baton Rouge, authentic Louisiana at every turn. Popeye's Chicken and Biscuits, featuring Cajun-style chicken, red beans and rice, and buttermilk biscuits, all flavored by the memories and imaginations of Louisiana chefs. Popeye's Chicken and Biscuits, committed to preserving Louisiana's flavor heritage. Something old and something new. Louisiana Cooking with a Change of Heart is available for $29.95. This companion book to the television series features over 150 recipes. To order, please call 1-800-973-7246 or send check or money order to the address shown on your screen.